yeah, uh, it's not easy putting these plays on. It's uh, yeah, that's, that's the last word I would use. But um, this is the last play that you're about to see is uh, called Visitor, uh, written and directed by myself, Quentin Stuckey. And uh, essentially, it's a look at the modern American family, except through a different lens, uh, including talks of cellular devices and controversial issues. And hopefully, all you guys enjoy it, and you're not too offended by it. A bit of salty language, especially near the end. Thanks for coming out, and I hope you enjoy the show. Exaggerating as usual, eh? It's what I do. Well, it's only three banks. You can just relax. Since when do you shop for the family? Well, since mom and dad are at work, I figure I'd do the shopping since I'm home. Mm-hmm. What are you really up to? What makes you think I'm up to something? Because you're never this considerate. You only don't give a damn what type of food we have in this house. I should be the one going shopping. I hate the food we have here. Okay, well, the food isn't just for me. It's for all of us. All of us? Yes. We're going to be having a special guest over. A special guest. Here, in this house. Yes, believe it or not, we have our fair share of special guests over. Who would want to step foot in the Reynolds territory? People hate us, and we hate them right back. Uh, my girlfriend, maybe? Another one? <laughs> how many girls have come and gone since you started university, Jared? And how are you planning on to get us all to sit down together? When was the last time we sat down for a family meal? Okay, well look, I figured that since... When was the last time we all sat down for a family meal? A long time. You know, you've changed since you came home. The Derek Reynolds I knew never would have gone shopping for his family. Or want to cook us dinner. People wouldn't be in the same room with us for any period of time. What can I say? I gained a new perspective on family values since I've been away. I spend my days in a dorm room with a roommate who barely acknowledges I exist. And my girlfriend goes to a completely different school. What other family do I have besides my family? If all you have to count on in life is your family, then I feel sorry for you. What's wrong with being close to your family? In case people with drugs have affected the evaluation of your life, I'll lay it on the line for you. Our family is by no means a close family. Well, hey, it's never too late to be reborn. Reborn? Yeah, that's the word I use. Are we a religious family now? What? I beg of you, don't use the word reborn around mom and dad. You know how they are. They could be using it in every tweet they post. Well, I used the word melancholy in front of dad last night, and I get to hear a tweet to that particular word. I don't even know if our dad's still alive. What? He hasn't tweeted anything since this morning. So? He normally tweets each hour of every day. He even loses sleep to update his tweet. Doesn't it strike you odd that mom and dad are so tech savvy? Look at the world we live in, Jared. 96% of the world owns a cell phone. Even the home link. Where'd you get that statistic? Internet. Can't you ever get any information from, from a book or anything else besides your phone? Why would I flip through the dusty prehistoric pages of a book? When I have everything I need right here in my pocket. You know, the day the government started handing out cell phones as a national courtesy handout was a dark day for humanity. Do you remember the footage that they had on the news of Obama chasing after people, demanding that they take these cell phones he was passing out? Even our own president has to be tech savvy. Nobody can afford not to have some type of cellular alert device in today's society. And if they can, they should be discriminated and 
judged for not jumping on the bandwagon. Are you saying people should be uh, ridiculed and, and judged because they don't own a cell phone? No, they should be ridiculed for going against the government and not having a cell phone is going against the government. Do you realize that the government doesn't own us? We have, we have the right to free will. It's not like you're throwing people in a jail cell for not obeying to the norms. That day will come if there is any justice. You know, sometimes I think you just say this stuff to make me mad. You know how I am, Derek. I'll admit I'm glued to my phone. I'm a victim of the government's sociological norm that says every person should carry a cell phone. That's my choice to make. I choose to be. Isn't that what you meant by free will? You know, sometimes our conversations I think can go from casual to political so quickly. Well, I like it when you come home to visit. For a 17 year old girl, you certainly have strong views. I resent that, Derek. Why? Because you're implying by your logic that I should be focused on the latest fashion trend or whether or not that boy's gonna ask me out on a date. Now you're just being cheesy and stereotypical. Not all teenage girls are focused on such high school things like that. But every 17 year old is. Isn't that what you said, Derek? I can't get a handle on this. I don't think I can get a handle on this. I gotta start cooking my dinner. I thought it was for all of us. Shut up. So what are you gonna make? Well, I was originally gonna make pizza, but then I figured out the spaghetti and it was a better option. Spaghetti and garlic bread? Of course. So why don't you tell me about this girl, Derek? What girl? The prostitute you're bringing home. Are you referring to my girlfriend? Girlfriend, prostitute, it's all the same to me. <laughs> well, I would love to tell you better, but I have to go and get dinner started. There will be no access to the Reynolds family kitchen until Derek Reynolds tells Keisha Reynolds about the latest skank that has made her way into his life. Okay, look, Keisha, I gotta get to the kitchen. Not until you tell me about her. Okay, seriously, move aside so I can go. I forbid it. Come on, Keisha, seriously, move aside. Never. Okay, look, I gotta get dinner started between mom and dad. Oh. Too late. And every hour, like I normally do. Father's company told him that they said if they catch him on a cell phone once more, he's fired. Did you have to tell them that? Why wouldn't I? It's the truth. So what if it's the truth? You don't tell our children. What the hell's your problem? When I said I was busy at work all day, painted a picture of a man who's hardworking and reliable. When you tell them that I nearly got fired because I had my phone out, paints a picture of a man who's lazy and incompetent. Shoot, stop! You have that thing out all the time. It's like part of your body now. Did you see? Yeah, I have great eyesight. You no, know, did you see the dad almost lost his job today because he was texting when he was supposed to be working? Derek, 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 texting. Oh my god, I was tweeting, not texting. My point is that excessive cell phone use isn't as sociologically, sociologically acceptable as people believe it to be. There is a huge difference between tweeting and texting, son. With tweeting, you share your thoughts with the whole world. and texting, you share your deepest fears and desires with one person. Man, you make it sound so damn poetic. Derek, the world's changing and you've got to get used to it now. Have you got all of our numbers on your cell phone or should you have to rewatch it? No, Mom, I haven't. In fact, that phone's up in my room and that's where it's going to be staying for the evening. So what about tonight? Well, my new girlfriend's going to be coming over. Oh, oh my god. For fuck's sake. Another one? What? Derek, sweetheart. You know we hate having people over. Okay, look, you guys won't have to lift a finger. I'm going to be cooking dinner and I'm going to be getting things ready for when she gets here. Can we see a picture of this girl? Is she an No. How about Twitter? No. Facebook? No. Ask him then. No. Oh. Does she even have a cell phone? <laughs> no. Oh, oh my lord. What is it now? You know, I just wanted to come home and eat my food with my family. Instead, I gotta have my dinner with dad being anti democratic liberal. Are you saying that my girlfriend is anti democratic because she doesn't have a cell phone? Well, she certainly isn't quite wearing the head to your... No, she's just different. That's one of the things that she's done for me. She's opened my mind up to a, to a whole new world of possibilities. Mm-hmm. What else does she do for you? I did it with Keisha. <laughs> you guys can all set aside your opinions about technology and society for one night. Enjoy Bert's company. Well, can you guys say that my girlfriend's going against the government because she don't have a cell phone on her at all times? 
So you do admit it's going against the government? No, but something I will admit to you is you guys are all victims of devices in your pockets. Hey, who is? You are. Me? Yes, all of you. Come on, Derek, get off the gun. I will not get off the gun. Every time I turn around, you guys are on those cell phones. It sickens me. <laughs> You've hey! Me kidding. Derek! What's your angle here, son? My angle is that every time I turn around, you guys are on these cell phones. You guys are not an individual family. You guys are a nuclear family, and this is not what I wanted to come home to. You know, you have changed a hell of a lot since you left college. Hello, my name is Danny Worcester. And I'm Carl Aram. We're here tonight to talk about a very important subject. Did you know that 96% of the world's population owns a cell phone? That statistic has even ushered in a new national courtesy handout of cellular devices all across America. And in the spirit of this technological upswing, we're here today to discuss with you the release of the new product from Apple, Worldwide Tomorrow. Yes, it's a new iPhone 17.5. It even includes a new DNA sample identification to unlock your phone. It features singer-songwriter Ed Sheeran as the new voice of Siri. Siri, help! I broke my legs! When your legs don't work like they used to before. And it even includes a new sound, a uh, new surround sound speakers with uh, five different volume settings. And there's even a new tracking device that lets the government watch everything you're doing to uh, better assist your customer needs, of course, you know. Why else would they need that? So, uh, buy the new iPhone 17.5 from Apple in stores tomorrow. Retail price of $10,000. Yeah. <laughs> buy it or we'll find you. <laughs> so what do you think of the pizza? It's wonderful, Derek. Just wonderful. I thought we were having spaghetti. I changed my mind. First you changed your mind about having pizza. Look, we're having pizza. Okay, look, I just wanted to see if everybody was enjoying it. You're a break off. Come on. Better be great. I'll do his little outburst. He shall we have a guest. I don't give a damn, he insulted us. How dare he think he could heal our pain by filling our stomachs? Can I get another slice of the starving? I was only speaking the truth. The truth hurts, but this pizza is delicious. Mom and Dad, weren't you guys the ones who told me that honesty is always the best policy? I don't recall saying anything, but Russell, don't speak with your mouth or you'll choke. If I were choked at you'd probably be happy. You can suppose I can be married. All right, that's enough of the two of you guys. Exactly. Stop ho hogging all the attention with your lack of dining etiquette. Do you think you should be focused on this or maybe? Oh, maybe I'll talk to you. Not you. I was talking to... What's your name again? Cooper. <laughs> I'm sorry. Say it again. Bert. Yes, Bert. What's a pretty name? Oh, sorry. I don't know quite how to say this, but uh, isn't Bert, you know, a guy's name? Dad. I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, no, really. I'm just. insulting her name. It's actually considered unisex, sir. <laughs> well, when I was your age, girls had girl names and boys had boys. Yeah. And that's a boy name. Okay, well, yeah, times have changed, okay? Uh, it's very hypocritical coming from you. Yeah, well, at least I didn't almost lose my job today. All right, all right. Let's take a step back here. Why don't you tell us how you and Derek met? I'm sure it's a funny story. <laughs> well, I'm actually always had eyes for Derek. Oh, come on, you don't need to get into that. You never always had eyes for Derek. I'm sorry? You said you always had eyes for Derek. But in reality, you never truly had eyes for him until he passed you the love note. Which is pretty lame on your part, Derek. Do we know how to hit on a girl? Okay, but why aren't you giving me your story? No! I forbid you! Keisha. I don't quite understand what the problem with my story is. Your story has no sense of logic. And I don't care to hear another word from you. All right, that's it. No more pizza for you. No, I'll have as much pizza as I want, Derek. You happen to be a terrific cook. Why, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> I have something I'd like to say. 
No, you don't, Dad. I said I have something I'd like to say. You've already contributed to this conversation. <laughs> I want my cell phone back. Well, that's too bad. You're not going to get it. You're going to give it back to me right now. Make me. Bert, you must be really confused as to what's going on in front of you right now. I think you're angry with each other themselves. Angry? No, no, no. They're rehearsing a scene from, from a play. Really, Mandy? <laughs> Okay, Mom, she's not an idiot. She knows that this isn't the fun. I think you two, you two are fine actors, and what better way to introduce Mandy, shut the fuck up! Okay, look, it's official. Oh, okay, this dinner's gone on the other hand. Oh, yeah, we can get this back on track, eh? Yeah, okay, well, my mom's trying to pretend that all this is just, uh, yeah, a scene from a play. My father just told my mother to shut the... Yeah, she, he told him to shut her up. And now my sister's eating all the pizza that I worked so hard to make. I am not. Yeah, that's it. We've gone too far. There's no way we, we can redeem it. You should be at the door. We don't have visitors this time, right? Maybe it's Satan. Yeah, by the devil. Oh, good. Yeah. Everyone sit tight. those boring family dinners, the small talk, the arguments, the tasteless food, the ugly tablecloths. Oh, when will it come to an end? <laughs> oh. We have the product for you. This here is the indoor food dispenser from the Immediate Satisfaction Company. With it, you won't have to sit through another boring family dinner ever again. Yes, the new indoor food dispenser from the ISC will provide any food you want at any time of the day. As you can see, it's small enough to install in your room, but not big enough to feed an entire family. It makes mealtime a fun time. Forget about planning an elaborate family meal. The indoor food dispenser from the ISC will provide anything just for you and nobody else. Simply enter the food you want into the high-tech computer and BAM! Watch your food come out <laughs> right before your eyes. You won't have to sit in another family dinner again. So, buy the new indoor food dispenser from the ISC today. Thank you. It's your brother. He's off from university, eh? Huh? Hey, get away from the window. This, there he is. The eldest of the Reynolds family. I see he's got a new girlfriend. What a stud. Leave my brother alone, Philip. Come on, you know I like the guy. He's very polite and a great cook. Yeah, that's why you're not best friends with him anymore. Who needs him? He's a jerk. You have to complain to him all the time. No wonder. He's an asshole. That's enough, Philip. You do complain about him, don't you? Yeah, I know that I do. There is one thing I admire Derek for. I know, what's that? He introduced me to his sister. Can you tell me why you came here tonight, Phil? Quit playing games, Keisha. I'm not playing any games with you. Didn't you text me saying that you were having a family dinner? Yeah, so? I thought, that was, I thought that was code for, Philip, get your handsome ass over to my place and save me from my family. That wasn't code, you idiot. Don't keep calling me names. I drove a long way to get here. Keep your voice down. There's already enough tension going on in that living room. Does your family still not know about me? How did you suddenly come to that conclusion? Well, you told me to keep my voice down as you're trying to hide the fact that I'm standing outside your house. Look, 
My family doesn't know about you, and they can't ever know about you. Why the hell not? We've been over this. They would never approve of you. Why? I'm, I'm quite the guy. Philip, take a look at yourself. I don't have a mirror. You don't shower. You don't bother tucking your shirt in. You smell awful. You're a drug dealer. And you're my brother's ex-best friend. So? So seriously, get out of here, Philip. Please, Keisha, come out with me tonight. I got some stuff set aside for you. How would you say we get high and listen to some Pink Floyd? Wasted away, the darkness <laughs> that break up the dull days. No, not tonight, Philip. What do you mean, not tonight? It's what we've been doing every night for the last two months. You ever think that maybe I need a break from smoking weed? A break? You never need a break from something that makes you feel good. Too much of anything requires a break, Philip. Even too much of you. Please call me tonight. Just tell your family you have to go identify a body at the morgue or something. That's the worst excuse you've ever come up with. They can't still be my old math here today, right? They sure are. Are you serious? Have you even seen my crazy math? Yeah, I saw it right before we lit your report card on fire. <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot about that. We did it together if I remember correctly. You know, my parents are still asking about that report card. I keep telling them I'm for, for, ugh, constantly forgetting at school. What do they say to that? My dad keeps subtweeting me and my mom wants to have me tested for dementia. <laughs> I guess that says a lot about my parents. Yeah, it says that your dad's an online gossip and your mother is irrational. You complain about them all the time, along with your brother. They just never pay attention to me. Well, they do to a point, but they never pay attention to the important things. They don't have a clue to what's going on in my life. Do you want them to know what's going on in your life? I don't know. I guess it would be nice if they took an interest. Even if they found out things about my life, I'd rather remain hidden. Like your marijuana addiction? I'm not addicted, so you can shut your mouth! I have a theory. About what? About you. About me. That's right. In the short time we have spent in each other's presence, I've come to a few conclusions about Miss Keisha Reynolds and what makes her tick. We've been together for two months. I'm sure there's a lot you don't know about me. Do you want to hear my theory or not? No, nope, I should go back inside. Do you want your family t-shirts? I told you before that I do. I don't believe you. What? I said I don't believe you. Yeah, I heard you, you asshole. What are you trying to say? Are you trying to call me a liar? I'm a lot of things, but I'm not a liar. Are you gonna let me explain my thoughts? You're just gonna keep interrupting me. No, nope, I'm going back inside. Keisha, if you truly hate your family, and everything they ever have and everything they ever will be, then going back inside that family dinner would be so damn important. Who do you think you are trying to tell me how I feel? And you remember that theory you're telling me about? Yeah. It's the following. You drank, you smoked, you did what your parents would supposedly never approve of, because deep down you just want their attention. And even if they found out all these things you do, all these horrible activities, they wouldn't care because finally you've won their attention. You don't have a clue as to what you're talking about, Philip Jennings. Your refusal to accept my theory says otherwise, Keisha Reynolds. You've been smoking too much weed. You don't have a concept of what you're saying. I'm not even high right now. But we could go do that together, like I planned. Unless you want to go back inside. Would you stop? You don't know what you're talking about! Keisha, I know exactly what I'm talking about. And that scares you, doesn't it? I guess it is entirely possible that, that I like my family. Maybe I even love them. But I know the right thing for me to do at this point is to go back inside and face the drama that is the Reynolds family dinner. Wait a minute. I just said you didn't hate your family. I never said about <laughs> loving them. Maybe I do desire their attention. You're right about everything you said. Well, I do like it when I'm right. I never realized these things about myself until now. I knew you had to be good for something. I'm also an amazing lover. Oh, that reminds me. You know how you and I are together? You bet I do. Yeah, not anymore. That curtain has gone down and I'm taking my bow. You're breaking up with me? Yep, I'm finished. I'm done sneaking around my family's back. I'm doing really badly at school. Can you understand that? No, I can't. Why? <sighs> you never used to care about what your family thought. You never used to care about these secret things that you did. What changed your mind? I demand to know. You did. Man, you're clueless sometimes. I love you, Keisha. Don't bother calling or texting me. I won't answer. And I'm blocking you on every social network. I thought we would have a special. Get out of here, Philip. They never invited me to a Reynolds family dinner. <laughs> Carl, 
can I ask you a question? <laughs> Carl, can I ask you a question? Oh, oh yeah, of course, Danny. Have you ever been high? No, Danny. <laughs> well, Carl, you don't have to lie anymore. Why is that, Danny? The social stigma surrounding the marijuana drug is finally coming to an end. See what, Danny? Yes, the marijuana drug has now become legal for recreational and medical use in over 47 states. That's a big number, but we're not quite there yet. Oh yeah, Danny, I mean like, we're so close to total legalization. I mean like, think of how awesome that is. I mean like, just, just think about it. I mean like, if you're like me and you have to hide your drug use to like, fit social stuff. <laughs> I vote yes on Proposition 93. Uh, that's yes on 93. Don't you want to be set free? Vote yes on 93. Thank you for your attention. <laughs> secrets from my family is easy for me, but for you it must be so difficult. It is. You know, you can tell them if you want. I can't bury them with my problems. It's my issue and I'll fix it. Don't you mean our issue? Really? We're going to start arguing about this? Well, we're arguing now, so we might as well keep going. We have so many complex things that we're starting to talk about. Notice that I said we. Oh geez, my family can see you now. You're not the shy brown hair girl saying there. Hey, you're yelling at me here. I'm not that shy girl anymore, Derek. Well, I guess we should have been uh, a little more careful then. Yeah, we really didn't think about the consequences. Was I your was I your first? No, was I your first? No. But we're the very first girl I've ever gotten pregnant. Derek, I can't believe this is happening to us. It happens more often than we think. We got drunk one night, we both wanted each other. Anymore. I just wish we could go back in time and prevent this from ever taking place. Now you're just being unrealistic and melodramatic. We counter problems before and we, we managed to overcome them. How can you be so calm and rational about these sort of things? Believe it. Inside, I'm running around and screaming and, and trying to find a way out of this nightmare of reality. You're not joking, you know, like that. I know, and I apologize. Derek, do you even want to have children? Yeah, having kids will be great, but not at 20. There's still so much I want to do, and, and so many places I want to go. I just, I don't know if I can be tied down by a kid. I want an abortion. Are you serious? You don't want to have, you don't want to have the baby? Derek, it's exactly like you said. We're both in college, and how can we possibly take care of a good child? It's just not gonna work. But I found a meme the other day that accurately describes my personality. That's so, Dad. Did you find it on Twitter? More like a meme. Well, I'd show you, but my son took away my cell phone. And isn't it great to be out of the world without a vibrating device in your pocket? 
No, no, it's not. Well, trust me, you'll thank me later for it. Sure as hell not gonna be today. Where are you guys doing back so soon? You only left 15 minutes ago. It was the weirdest thing. For the first time, we actually all decided on, you know, agreed together what we guys were gonna do. Holographic chocolate cake. Is there even such a thing as holographic food? Don't listen to Keisha. We got old fashioned chocolate cake. Wait, what? That's old fashioned chocolate cake mix. Well, when you said you got old fashioned chocolate cake, you know, I thought you got a pre made cake, but instead you just got a cake mix? That's what I said. Oh, come on, so now I gotta make this too after I just made dinner? Well, you make us dinner, you might as well make us dessert. Come on. <laughs> Besides, you got two lovely chefs. Each and third. And I can't bake. You're just not, you're just not putting any effort in. Now, you can still go to the kitchen and start the process. Your mother and I will be right out here. All right, yeah, they're totally up to something. You think? Yeah. Mandy, I don't see anything like this. Come on, you know you can't do this. Well, what to do? Now let me say what I want to say. What is it that you want to say? I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry too. So, is that it? I mean, can we go back to the way things were? You mean before we wanted a divorce? Yeah, I mean, don't you think that was a much happier time for both of us? It really wasn't a happy time for either of us. Why would you say that? If we were truly content with our life before we wanted a divorce, we wouldn't be getting one, would we? You know what? Fuck you and your fucking mom. This is it. We meet with our lawyers tomorrow. And when we tell the kids that that's the whole entire thing, you know how devastating they're going to be? Okay, yeah, you're right. I agree with you. We should finalize the divorce. You do? Yeah, and if you let me speak my mind, then you would already know that. But no, don't let the stupid fucking husband express himself. So why did you suggest we go back to how things were? When did I say that? Earlier in the conversation. I still love you, stupid. And though we may both agree and understand the reasons for a divorce, that doesn't mean I like it. Well, that's why you were looking for that one shred of more love in life that isn't now. Exactly. It hasn't worked for the last 26 years. Why on earth is it going to work now? I, I just try to find one, one shred of hope in any situation. You're such a nonsense. <laughs> and you're such a fucking person. How did I ever think that we would be compatible? Our parents thought we were a good match. You should never listen to what your parents say because you could end up marrying the wrong person. 26 years of marriage, Andy. We must have been doing something right, don't you think? What's your point? We must be doing something right if we've lasted this long. Man, you are such a... Hey, Bert, how you doing, Bert? Bert, it feels like we haven't seen you in forever. How are you, Bert? Derek sent me out here. Why? Well, you're too arguing. Arguing? No. Uh, putting on a scene from a play. Another one. Nope. Uh, same play we're rehearsing at dinner. Well, what's this play called? It's called... <coughs> Creatures. Creatures. Yeah. Derek wrote the entire thing. One, uh, one very stormy night. Derek. Yeah. Uh, Derek Reynolds. Going good. We're just putting on the final touches, just like you were saying. You guys work fast. Oh yes, we love you. <laughs> That's funny. Oh. So, do you guys just spontaneously start rehearsing for a play at any given moment? Okay, I think we should go back to the kitchen, Bert. I really do. Bye. Bye. Hey, Derek. Oh, what's the matter oh, with you? What are you going on about? Rehearsing a scene from a play? I used an excuse to dinner and now you're using it again at dessert? Oh, sorry. God awful excuse. Who cares? Derek won't care. We just met his girlfriend. Sure, he thinks we're fucking crazy. Have you, have you met him? With his track record, she'll be out of the picture in a week. I think you'll be out of the picture in another week. Oh, you want me to be the one who moves I'm in? I'm not asking, I'm telling. Mandy, you are by far the most. Keisha Reynolds, we're going to talk about this. <laughs> You don't recognize me? Someone comes bursting into my house in the middle of the night. I sure as hell hope I don't recognize them. You seriously don't recognize me? No, no. Would you kindly leave our home now? I'm Philip Shedding. Philip Shedding? Yes. 
Good lord, you let yourself go. Well, <laughs> Philip? Derek? Philip, Keisha! <laughs> You've got quite the situation on our hands. Yeah, I'm gonna set this cake down, then we're gonna talk about it. Sounds like a good idea. All right then, Philip. What the hell are you doing in my house? Kind of a long story. You slept with my girlfriend two years ago. We haven't talked to each other since. You're I still on about that? Didn't I tell you about the story? Come on. Yeah, because a simple call. Him, Derek? No, my girlfriend at the time, Janine. Me and her were quite the catch. And then Philip happened to show up at her apartment when she was washing her hair and saw her naked. You know, I'm standing right here, Derek. Not you, Janine. <laughs> I told you I was sorry. Yeah, because a simple fault changed the fact that you slept with my girlfriend. You told me you both cheated on the test and got caught for it. Keisha, we should tell him. Tell him what? Uh, I don't even know what you're talking about. Come on, Keisha, just tell everyone the truth. What do you have to tell me, Philip? You know, you did burst into my house, calling my daughter's name. So, something's got to be going on here. You know, you better tell me what's going on or else I'm going to scream. Okay, okay, why don't we all have some chocolate cake? <laughs> no, all right, that's it. I'm telling them. Philip, don't. Keisha and I are in love. We've been dating for the last two months. Also, she purchases drugs off me. From time to time. <laughs> what? Excuse me? Tensions are running high. Why don't we have a piece of chocolate cake? Keisha, aren't you so glad you got that off your chest? Yeah, Philip, you've granted me quite a service. Now my whole family knows how much of a liar I am. Thanks! I'm getting out of here. Philip, Katie, my younger sister, do you know how old she is? She's 21? 21. She's 17, Philip. You know, uh, she never told me that. I ought to call the cops on you right now. Why don't you? My son took away my cell phone. <laughs> you are the house phone? Get up! I'm going, I'm going. I'm going. First you sleep with the woman I love, and now you're selling legal substance to my sister. Do you have any boundaries? I never slept in this with you. Yeah, that's very reassuring. <laughs> We knew Keisha, but I guess we never truly knew her. She's just a teenager. It's, it's what they do. They rebel against their parents. But how in the hell could she go so far as to get involved with someone like Philip Shetty? I don't know, Dad. I, I really don't. You never lied to us, Derek. You always told us the truth no matter how hard it was. Yeah, I mean, you may have become an anti-democratic liberal, but at least you were honest. <laughs> hey, uh, hey, Bert. Yes. Do you think, um, maybe we should... Just go ahead. Okay. Um, Mom and Dad, <laughs> I got something that I have to tell you guys. What is it? Are you taking us a phone back? Yeah, keep training that. Well, uh, Bird is, um, two weeks pregnant, and, uh, we're debating on whether or not we want to keep this baby or have an abortion. <laughs> Well, that went a lot better than I expected. <laughs> oh, that's her fault. Oh my god, is she going to be okay? It happens all the time. <laughs> I bet you're pretty mad at that. You know, it's your life, fun thing, huh? I'm so sorry. Hey, you know, your mother and I can't get too mad about, you know, Keisha smoking dope or you getting this girl pregnant. We've been keeping it a secret of our own. What is it? You're adopted! <laughs> what? <laughs> no, and you're not, honestly, but, uh... <laughs> oh, man. Jeez. Maybe we should've just eaten a cake. <laughs> that would've been a lot better. feel the passion between you and your loved one anymore? Are you looking for a way out of your loveless marriage? Well, at Davidson and Associates, they can work wonders. I got my divorce to Davidson Associates, and I've never been happier. Ow! Oh. Hi, sweetie. I came to visit you at work. Come on. See, I'll bow and chain one second. 
What do you want, Heather? Well, the strangest thing just happened to me. I was walking, and then a ring fell out of the sky and onto my head. It's so strange. Anyways, I just wanted to come say hi and ask you if you wanted cheese or spinach lasagna for dinner tonight. Do you think lasagna's gonna fix our marriage, Heather? Oh, fix our marriage? What? Does it look like I eat spinach, Heather? <laughs> well, I mean, I was just, I mean, well, we, we do eat a lot of red meat, and, you know, I wanted to live a healthier life with you, and I just thought that we... No, no, Heather, you didn't think. Get out of my face, we're gonna get divorced, leave. Okay. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> call Davidson Associates and fill out them papers. <laughs> I mean, what are you waiting for? There's so much better opportunities out there for you. If you're mad and lonely, then why suffer? You deserve the best. Things can get better, and they will. I mean, my future's looking so bright already. So call 1-800-DIVORCE. That's 1-800-DIVORCE. <laughs> this has been a paid message from Davidson & Associates. <laughs> She's two weeks pregnant. That was a big secret I was protecting, and uh, we're gonna abort the pregnancy. And mom and dad, they're getting a divorce. I meant more along the lines of, did anyone have any cake? <laughs> <laughs> no, nobody touched the cake. You got her pregnant? Yeah. She you got totally pregnant? smashed one day. She was like on her second section. She didn't get arrested. Really? Yeah, she's not gonna see this. <laughs> so she's getting an abortion. Yeah, I'm taking her to a doctor tomorrow and we're on our way home and she's gonna be in the You're leaving tomorrow? Yeah. But tomorrow's only Saturday. I thought you were staying for the whole weekend. Well, there's been too much drama for one weekend, okay? Mom and Dad, they're barely speaking to each other. My girlfriend, she's getting an abortion and you're dating my ex best friend. My ex best friend. Sorry, I threw it. I broke up with him, okay? You know, I just can't believe. Okay, forget it. I'm not gonna do it. No, dear. Say it. Come on, what were you gonna say? Okay, look, I just thought you'd have better taste in men, okay? I'm sure you've done your fair share of drugs, Derek. Okay, look, it's not the drugs, okay? It's just that of all the guys you could have gone with, you choose the one guy. The one guy I would not approve of. Is it your mission in life to make me miserable? Yo, yeah, well, maybe if I made my whole family a miserable wreck, at least I got their attention. Our attention? Is that what this is that what this whole thing's about? Is our attention? I guess so. You don't think anybody pays any attention to you at all. It's always been a certain way with our family. And what way is that? You've always been the responsible, smart older brother that I always wanted to be, and I've been the irresponsible, rebellious younger sister that no one cares about. That's not the case at all. Why do you think that? Well, for one, the only person I know that has stronger political and social beliefs than myself, so that means you're pretty smart. Second of all, you know what mom and dad did after you left? Well, mom cried. That's it? Mom cries about everything. Okay, well she also fainted. Really? Really. I made Z Mandy Reynolds faint. Yeah, everybody was pretty sick when you left. You know, you can't do that anymore because you only rebel to have fun, not to, not to rebel against your family. I guess I feel a little bit better. Good. Now promise me something. What? Promise me that you're never gonna see Philip Shedding again and I'll forgive you. I promise. Cross your heart and hope to die? Yes. Very good. So, Mom and Dad are really splitting up, eh? I guess it's been a long time coming, but there's not much we can really do but remain neutral and refuse to take sides. I'm taking Dad's side. What? I was gonna take Dad's side. You get Mom, <laughs> sucker. You know, do you think we should talk to them? Do you think it's at all our fault that they no longer want to be together? Do you think that maybe they think that 
maybe me and you would be better off if the two of them were, I don't know, separated? Who cares? What do you mean, who cares? I feel better about myself. I think I'm gonna go to bed. Are you really that selfish? You're gonna leave now. I told you you can't count on your family for anything. You know what? We should get our family down here and we should do one of those big old bachelor family clubs. It's been like 10 years since we've done one of those. I know, so let's do it. Why do you always have to do this? Do what? End the night with a climactic, emotional, family display of affection. Just go to bed. Look, there's still a slight chance of redeeming this family. Why don't you get mom and dad down here in the four of us? You know. It's been good seeing you. Have a safe trip home and good luck with being father. Or not being father, whatever you choose. Thanks, Keisha. Oh, and Derek? Yeah. Next time, don't try so hard. Just let us be. Well, if there's one thing you count your family for, they'll never make your life miserable with you, Warren. Ha, ha, ha.